Hey everybody, this is Mr. McKee with Net225. Uh, today I'm going to be going over Packet Tracer 13.2.7, which is configure a basic uh, wireless LAN or WLAN on the WLC. All right. Um, this is it takes you through just the basic configurations on a um, wireless LAN controller uh, for Cisco, uh, which is a pretty good lab. Uh, and there are several questions in here that you'll need to answer, and I'll submit a, I'll include a Word document with um, each of those questions labeled, so it's kind of easier to, easier for me to see and easier for you to see what needs to be answered. And there'll be some uh, configurations also. All right, um, first thing we want to do, let's look at our topology on our um, workspace in uh, Pack Tracer. All right, we have a layer three switch right here, switch one, uh, access point. We have a um, wireless LAN controller right there, uh, router one, a server, admin PC, and then a wireless host out here that is currently not connected because it was connected to have the dash lines. All right. And let's, let's look at our addressing table, R1. All right. Looks like it's doing some inter, inter VLAN routing. Gigabit 00, I believe, is right here. Our gigabit zero zero. What? Okay, gigabit zero zero zero. All right, maybe that's maybe that's has an issue. Looks like it's backwards. Like all these IP addresses are right, but that that is wrong. All right, we'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, let's do this thing. All right, and in wireless running controllers, when I did my CCNA, we didn't have any kind of wire, really any kind of wireless um, configurations to do on that. So that all this stuff is new to me. So I'm, I'm I'm interested in learning how to do this also. So this is um, some good stuff because I got to retake my CCNA in before November. So definitely, I'm gonna definitely pay attention and probably re review this lab at least once or twice, maybe. All right, so R1 has some inter VLAN RAM going on, switch one, uh, VLAN 200. I'm assuming that that's the management network. All right, local area access point, giga zero. Let me click on this too. A lot of this stuff is new. All right. So wireless uh, land controller management, ESL, land two hundred is management, VLAN. All right. Admin PC up there. Wireless host down here. It's going to be. Um, Get his IP DHCP assigned. All right. So in this lab, you will explore some of the features of a wireless LAN controller. You will create a new uh, wireless LAN on the controller and implement security on the, on that LAN. Then you will configure a wireless host to connect to the new wireless LAN through an AP that is under the control of the WLC. Finally, you will verify connectivity. Uh, connect to a wireless LAN controller GUI. Explain some of the information that is available on the WLC monitor screen. Configure a wireless LAN on a wireless LAN controller. Implement security on a wireless LAN. And configure a wireless host to connect to a wireless LAN. All right. So here's our background. An organization is centralizing control of their wireless LANs by replacing their standalone access points with lightweight access points. All right. And a wireless LAN controller, WLC. You will be leading the project and want to become familiar with the WLC and um, any potential challenges that may occur during the project. You will configure a uh, WLC by adding a new wireless network and configuring it with WPA2, um, P PSK, excuse me, security. To test the configuration, you will connect a laptop to the wireless LAN and ping devices on the network. 
I support one monitor to the WLC. Wait until STP has converged on the network. All right, it looks like everything's converged because everything's green. You can click the Pack Tracer Fast Forward Time button, which I just did, to speed up the process. Continue when all link lights are green. Go to the desktop of Admin PC, top center, and open up a browser. I have to grab the handles and make it a little bit bigger. All right. All right. Enter the management IP address of WLC1 from the addressing table into the uh, address bar. You must specify the HTTPS protocol. So this should be the management IP address. They got port 443, so you got to put in HTTPS 168.200.24. All right, that's right. Let's go back now where we were. All right. So click login to enter and enter these credentials. So what we did last packet tracer, that was like a home all in one wireless router, router, switch, um, you know, NAT firewall, all that stuff. This is a controller that's controlling other APs and things like that. All right more of like an enterprise setup. All right, so let's see, admin for username and password is Cisco with a capital C at the beginning, one, two, three. All right, so after a short delay, you will see the WLC monitor summary screen. And that was pretty fast. All right, let me make this just a tad bit bigger. And this looks like just like the video you guys watched at the top of the screen in Netiquette. All right. Packet Tracer does not support the initial dashboard that has been just demonstrated in this module. Okay, so no dashboard. Okay, scroll through the monitor summary screen. All right, so management interface. Rogue summary, nothing new on there. Software uptime 11 minutes. All right, AP1, no current clients, things like that. All right. So what can be learned from the screen? That's a good question. There's a lot of stuff you can see in there. See who's on the network, how many access points are connected, current clients, things like that. If it's picking up some kind of rogue APs that aren't part of its network, but it's, it can communicate with or, or see. Uh, is, the, is the WLC connected to an AP? So you can scroll down and look for that. Let's see what the detail tab does. Looks like something or other is going down, down there. Don't hit back like I just did. All right, as it's uh, admin. Cisco one two three. All right, we're back. All right, let's see. Click de uh, click detail next to the all APs entry. Click detail next to the all APs entry in the access point summary. Which it just did. What information can you find about APs and all APs and on the all APs screen? Let's see if I can get back from there without logging me out. All right, so that's all that info.
All right, let's go back to monitor. All right, we're back there. All right, so you can answer that. Create a wireless LAN. Next, you create you will create a new wireless LAN on the WLC. You will continue configure the settings that are required for hosts to join the wireless LAN. Uh, step one is create and enable a wireless LAN. Click WLANs in the WLC toolbar, which is the second tab from the left. Alright, it will say create new right there. Click go. Alright. Enter the profile name of the new wireless LAN and use the profile name floor to employees. And what does this have? Just a VLAN. Alright. Assign an SSID of SSID 5 or SSI put ID hyphen 5. Select the value of 5 to keep it consistent with the VLAN number in SSID. I'm assuming it said, is that the ID of five? No, oh, select ID, okay. Host will need to use SSID to join the network. Select the ID for the VLAN. This value is a label that will be used to identify the, the wireless LAN and is other the wireless use this value is a label that will be used to identify the wireless LAN used to identify the WLAN is other displays. Um, okay, probably means in other displays maybe. Select the value of 5 to keep it consistent with the VLAN number and SSID. This is not a requirement, but it helps with understanding the topology. Alright, so little issue right there. Click apply, top right. Alright, now that the wireless LAN has been created, you can configure features of the network. Click enabled to make the wireless LAN functional. Assuming it's right there. It's and it says it's a common mistake to accidentally skip the step. Okay. All right. Choose the VLAN interface that will be used for the wireless LAN. The WLC will use this interface for user traffic on the network. Click the drop-down box for interface interface group. Select the WLAN 5. This interface was previously configured on the WSC for this activity. Okay. Click Advanced tab. Scroll down to the Flex Connect portion of the page. All right, Flex Connect. Click to enable Flex Connect local switching. All right, and Flex Connect local off. All right, and then click Apply to enable the new LAN, WLAN. And if you forget to do this, the WLAN will not operate. All right, let's look at it. All right. All right, the new WLAN currently has no security in place. The WLAN will initially use WPA2 PSK security. In another activity, you will configure the WLAN to use WPA2 Enterprise, a much better solution for larger wireless uh, networks. My lights seem to be flickering. All right. Secure the LAN. The new WLAN currently has 
Whoops. Okay. It's hard to read all this text all squished together. All right, in the WLAN edit screen. WLAN edit, okay. Go to board to employees WLAN, which we're on. Select the security tab. All right, under the layer two tab, which we're on layer two right now, select WPA plus Click the security tab and then layer two security. Layer two tab. Or select. Alright, WPA plus WPA2. Alright, got that. Bunch of stuff popped up. This will re reveal the WPA parameters. Click the checkbox next to WPA2 policy. Right there. Make sure you make sure it's WPA2. This will reveal additional security settings under authentication key management. All right, which is right there. Enable PSK. All right. Now you can enter the pre-shared key. That will be used by host to join the WLAN. Use Cisco123 with a capital C in the beginning. And see, I wish it would make me enter it twice in case you put it, type it in incorrectly. All right, apply up here. Changing WLAN parameters while it is connected will cause the WLAN to momentarily disable, be disabled and thus may result in loss of connectivity for some users, for some clients. Click OK, or press OK. It's hard for me to press it. I can click it. All right, let's see. It is not a good practice to reuse passwords when configuring security. We have reused passwords in its activities to simplify configuration. Well, thank you. All right, all right. After applying the configuration, click back. This will take you back to the WLAN screen. All right, we are there. Um, let's see. Everything looks cool in there. What information about the new uh, WLAN is available on the screen? Well, you can see all that. Looks like WLAN ID, profile name, SSID, admin status, security policies, you can remove it. We're not going to do that. All right. If you click the WLAN ID, you'll be taken to the WLAN's edit screen. Use this to verify and change the details of the setting. I'm not going to click it. It's weird. I can't tell if I clicked it or not. It's doing something. Maybe. Okay, there we go. All right, it's doing, I figured it was doing something. All right, so we can edit stuff if we need to. I'm gonna go back. All right. All right. Let's see where we were at. All right, so now we're going to go to part three, which is connect a host to the uh, WLAN, connect to the network, and verify connectivity. Sorry about that. All right. All right. Let's see. Wireless host. All right, click on the PC wireless. PC wireless tile. All right, so on desktop. 
get rid of this stuff everywhere else. I just include the PC while it was tile. All right, so not associated, no association with access point. Click the connect tab. All right, after a brief delay, you should see the SSID for the WLAN appear in the table of wireless network names. Select the SSID 5 network and click the connect button. All right, enter the pre-shared key that you configured for the WLAN, which should be cat. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You ever killing me doing these comments? All right. So Cisco with capital C, one, two, three. Connect. Watch that for adapter is active. You know what though? Did I put my yeah the passwords right? Let's refresh it. Okay, connect WPA two. Whoops. PA two. Cisco one two three. My adapter is not active. Let me go fast forward. Okay. You successfully connected to the access point. Okay, I have not successfully connected to the access point. I did something wrong. Let's look at this. I go back to my WLC, which let's see, 192.168.200.254. This is going to be one of those days. All right. So for some reason, if I go to WLANs, let's see what this thing, I messed up something, I think. I'm going to change the password. Oh, it's still not connected. All right. Security, WPA, WPA2. All right, let me check this. Cisco, one, two, three. I may have a, I may have had an under, uh, lowercase, possibly. Cisco. All right. Now let's go back here, and let's refresh. I see that. See how now it has a dash line. May have, I had. Remember, I was saying I wish it would. Add, it would make you verify by entering the password twice. That's more than likely what was wrong. So that's that's not the greatest. All right. So we're connected. See, adapter is active. Everything's good now. I just know a lot of times you gotta go to the computer and troubleshoot things. All right. So let's see. Okay. So we connected. Select the SSID 5, enter the pre-share key, click the link information right there. All right, you've successfully connected to an access point. All right, you should see the message that confirms that you've successfully connected to the access point. You should also see a wireless wave. Okay, so a wave. I'll call it a wave from now on instead of a dash line. All right, usually a dash line actually looks like a crossover cable. But, all right, a wave. All right. 
showing the connection to lap lap dash one. Uh, close the PC wireless app and open the IP configuration app. Right, and that app is open. All right, verify the wireless host has received a non a PIPA. So like a, a PIPA is like a one what one sixty nine dot whatever. It's, it's just auto auto uh, configured address over DHCP. If not, click the fast forward button a few times. We've got 192.168.5.3, so we're good. Um, from wireless host, ping the wireless LAN default gateway and server to verify the uh, laptop has full connectivity. So, didn't have to do that. We're going to ping. So it wants us to ping the wireless default gateway. And if I do IP config default gateway one sixty eight five dot one. So let's ping five dot one. Control C, ping 192.168.5.1. Alright, we're getting responses back. Alright, then it wants us to um, and the server. So the server is ping 172.168.200.200. One seventy two. What in the world did I just do? One seventy two. Oh my gosh! This, I'm doing great today. One seventy two thirty one dot one dot two fifty four. All right, server one seventy two thirty one one two fifty four. All right. Now, now we're going to do some some stuff here. Hopefully. First request finds times out. That's fine. Now do it again. All right, had to do an ARP translation. Usually lose a lose a packet first. All right, so we're good right now. So all you need to submit is your .pka file, a screenshot of your check results. See how it says congratulations, Mr. McKee, you completed the activity. If not, your your errors and your assessment items, and then do this right here okay and then the answers to the questions that were listed in the lab all right and that's it thanks for watching